You have landed on The Substance, a podcast aiming at being biblical, thoughtful, and human. Join us each week as we engage the culture without the culture war. I'm your host, Trevor Aiken, joined live Hey, my two hosts. We're all in the same room again. Yeah, that's so yes, great. Sir. Philip. Hey, everybody. And Vincent. What's going on? And howdy. No howdy this time? Yeah, I'm switching howdy. it up a little bit. I like it. I like it. Did, you never listen, know. You got made happen. fun of by somebody, and now you're switching it up. Is that, is that what's up? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get back to howdy. Don't all worry. Right, don't worry. I'll right. get back. Dude, when, when Barnabas Piper threw that back at you, like he had like a hardcore accent on Howdy, it. Howdy, partner. <laughs> yeah, he, he went he went full y'all on it. He did. It, went, and it sounded very and our, southern. Our, and our like downloads in Nashville like spiked through the <laughs> I do got to ch- Okay, also, so this is a topic toss-up. <laughs> this is a little bit uh, less formal in our structure. Word. Shout out to you guys. Heck yeah. Uh, the listeners all over the planet, still mostly oh, in the Praise U.S. Praise the Lord. We had a great month. I, we don't know exactly when this is going to drop. End of the month, beginning of... Uh, end of March, beginning of April. But um, <clears throat> I just checked. I'm very excited. One of the most... It, you we, spend we your have, life very excited, let's be honest. I do. I'm a very... <laughs> Very strong uh, seven. Tell me, I'm not. Tell me, I'm not speaking the truth right there. I'm, I, I'm, I'm nothing, seeking to be but resourceful, truth. but I'm a very strong seven, one way or the other. <laughs> a lot of exciting stats for the substance, but uh, one of the ones that was most exciting to me was we went down from 97 percent listenership in the U.S. to 93. So yeah. the word's getting out. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Shout, Shout out, out to, to uh, Canada. Yeah, Canada and the UK, the UK quite a bit. And I think Australia. Australia as and well. Australia. And France had a bit of a spike too. Hey. Ooh. I'm so, liking that. Shout out to all you guys. And also, also say personally, shout out to I think Josh Murtaugh and the two things was probably part of that because he's there over in the UK and has Canada? some Canada connections as well. Yep, I think his wife's go. from Canada. But anyway, so shout out to all of our international listeners. Thanks guys for joining. Back for another topic toss up. The real fans listen to topic toss ups. We know that. Yeah, and we got you know. a lot of real fans, man. It's it's been really cool seeing a lot of new people jumping on. A lot of people aren't subscribed yet. So, if you aren't and you love our content, you want to get notified for that. Just hit that subscribe button. It's totally free, and then you find out when we drop new stuff, which is every week on Sunday at three p.m. And you can uh, interact with us as well. The The first topic we're going to be hitting today came from a listener question. And actually, this was a listener question that was communicated to me on Clubhouse. Nice. Hey-o. So that's kind of cool. You can Shout look out. Shout out to Clubhouse. Out. If anybody is on Clubhouse, maybe like tweet at us. Uh, or Sorry, se- Android users. Send us a DM on <laughs> Instagram. Yeah. We are working on a number of our uh, past guests are also on Clubhouse as well. But we've been working on some ideas for some substance Clubhouse room. So hit us up if you're interested in that. So 100%. Uh, listener Stephanie in Clubhouse asks... How can we stay on Jesus' path despite feeling like being an outsider in college? Mm. I thought this was a great question. That's a, mm. that's a great and question. And a nice framing of it, too. Yeah. I think it's interesting, too, because there's so many different situations that would really change the council, right? Like, if this person is staying home for college versus are they traveling for college, right? Like, if sure. you're mm-hmm. driving really far away, so... Vince, what was your college experience like in brief? Um, Honestly, it's, it's probably pretty stereotypical to a lot of... Uh, young adults who go to college and grow up in church, or at least the were story you in state of or out of state? Of uh, it was in state. It was okay. in state. Trevor and I were as well. Oftentimes, yeah. you uh, or the story that you hear, which in, in this case applies to me, is you grow up hearing a lot about God, and so you kind of assume a lot of things, and then that usually gets challenged, whether that's mm-hmm. in a uh, f- uh, philosophy class sure. or you know uh, religious studies literature, or something. That, shout out, yeah, KSP. literature, mm-hmm. and so then you start to hear questions or what seem to be contradictions that you hadn't heard in church mm-hmm. and nobody ever told you or showed you, and then it's like, oh well, maybe this religion that I believe is not. Valid. And so mm-hmm. that's usually the challenge. Did you live at home when you were in college? Yeah, I did. I lived at home when I was going to community college. Then when I went to university, I was out of the house. Nice. Nice. Trevor, you were in the dorms. For, I remember hanging out in your dorm. Yep. I uh, I lived at home. I lived at home, but um, I, was I also I crashed in the dorms a lot. I just didn't want to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out yeah. to... Uh, actually, he Shout follows to us networking. on uh, Instagram a little bit. Shout out to... Uh, 
Charlie for letting me crash in his room. And TC, actually, also, who's a listener. There you go. I crashed in their rooms a lot. So, yeah, I think one of the ways I would approach it, like, when I immediately thought of this, I thought about my experience, and that was connecting with my church community. Mm -hmm. Um, That that's what it meant for me. Uh, I didn't, I didn't go to a Christian college, so I definitely felt that, um, felt being the outsider, felt being the other, especially living on the dorms. But I think the question kind of, I would assume for the, like being an outsider in college, you're a person of faith in a environment that is not a, a faith environment. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Like Liberty University. <laughs> 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 that's good. That's good. Nice work. I think you leave that one in. Yeah, uh, yeah. If it, that'd be a real growth opportunity for me if I actually leave that in. Um, but no, um, yeah, I, I feel that, and I think oh, it was easy for me in a sense because I was local. But I think if you're sure. not local, part of the challenge is, and I've worked with college students before, so I know, like, you go to this place and it's like, what's actually a good church family? Like, where? And I think that you can be like i think there's two things that make that hard one is trying to find something that's exactly like the church you left or you're you're coming from as a student it's just super hard um and and that you might not find that but like it's almost actually impossible unless you come from like a crazy like cookie cutter denomination yeah and even then like you find that other denomination the cookie cutter, it doesn't necessarily mean it'll plug in and click so i would say like get involved in either a university group or a church or anything where obviously they're preaching the word, um, which means that typically it means they're going through a text at a time. They're rooted in the text. Um, I I like to look at even though I don't agree with everything on nine marks and like where they stand on different things. Mm-hmm. Like I love the nine marks themselves. That's yeah. a great churches resource. That, and they have a church search resource on there. Yeah, yeah. Um, For Stephanie or anyone listening, the nine marks yeah. mm-hmm. church directory. It's at it's least all expensive. over the country. It might even be all over the world. Yeah. Of of gospel based and gospel uh, formed churches. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I like looking there, and then I I look at the church's website, see where they stand on issues like social justice, things like that. Um, try to see that there's some balance there as well. Um, and then I think it's a matter of trying some stuff out and seeing, like, I think just being somewhere where you can form real relationships. Yeah. That is the biggest key. Yeah. I think like interpersonal connections. Cause I mean, we talk about this a lot off air. I think we've talked about it some on the show. We should do like a full on episode hmm. about like discipleship, but like mm-hmm. God made us pers- like just as creatures, as, as communal creatures, but then especially as as Christians, as the family of God, we're deeply, actually dependent on one another. And when we're in isolation, it's impossible to thrive. Yeah. And I, I think in my experience, one thing that really helped me actually was the challenge. Mm. Um, because what mm-hmm. it did was force me to actually go do some digging, do some research yeah. and say, like, what's the legitimacy of their claims? And it's not necessarily being biased. It is being discerning, but it's not being biased. It's just saying, okay, if they say it's a contradiction, is it? And yeah. actually going to research that. And I think that was a huge help because you see kind of the common arguments um, for thwarting Christianity or thwarting the uh, the textual um, reliance of the mm-hmm. scriptures or um, the legitimacy of the Bible and the manuscripts and things like that. And it it's really uh, just an adventure in a sense yeah. to know the word and, and kind of what surrounds the word in a, in a deeper way. And I think if in, in that way, and also plugging in with people who know the word, who's preaching the word, it can really uh, continue to ground an individual. Yeah. Uh, well, and who are living it too? Because I think I appreciated that she phrased it. That was like feeling like an outsider. Like mm-hmm. if you are not part of being around the family of God mm-hmm. in a healthy church, is formative. Yeah. It's not like the preaching of the word, praying, um, the the various spiritual disciplines that we all should be engaging in on our own are important. But when we come together, we see that, oh, like this is how the people of God operate. And that is kind of where we find our, yeah. our, our truest identity and tribe. And if you're, if you're not in that, you, you kind of are an outsider. Yeah. Mm. Like it is not bad to feel like an outsider yeah. in a group of people where 
they have no intention of honoring God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And and I a hundred percent agree with that. I will say one thing, if I could go back and do college, maybe a little differently, something that I've learned is like, I feel like I kind of came into college at, with a little bit of an oppositional mindset. Like, I don't know if it like hmm. not directly, not intentionally even, huh. but I feel like just, I had this feeling of like, you know, it's so Im- it baked into the Christian culture that, like, well, the secular college is, like, against God and all sure, stuff. Like, and culture like, war stuff. It's kind of mm. true. But, like, at the same time, these people are asking good questions. And it, as you're following the truth, like, just go with those. I remember ethics class in particular where, like, I was just going, like, full precept on, like, some of these ethics questions you're and like, things like have, that. trying to have a God's not dead moment. I, almost, <laughs> almost, honestly, like I, I had some interactions with a professor and like, he's like, bro, this is just like your high school Bible course. Like, that's not, that's not good. Like that, that's not good writing. And I think looking back on it, like, I really thought like, oh, you know, this is me standing up for my faith. But I think I was just being an idiot. Like, um, I think that like, I, if I had really thought about it, like I could have written better and I could have asked better questions and I could have still engaged even presuppositionally with the scriptures in those questions, but actually like explored them in a more deep and meaningful way that really took the questions seriously. And I feel like if you go into college with such an oppositional framework, like sometimes you might be othering yourself. Like hmm. that's a good point. you are other, you are the people of God, you are different, you are going to stand out, but don't make that because. Um, make that because you love Jesus and you're not going to like go in sin. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not going to, because a lot of college is like there's networks based on participating in sin together, but like, and you're not <laughs> going to do that. And so sure. you won't be as networked maybe as some people who are, but when people are asking real questions and really engaging in subjects, be willing to engage as much as the next person and asking those uh, because the, you're, you're someone who follows yeah. the one who says he's the truth and, you don't need to be afraid of that. Right. It's, and it's not forgetting that it is a place to learn. Yeah. Um, and so we can still embrace the fact that we are there to, you're there at that, you know, place at university yeah. to learn. And so it's, it's, some would, would say, oh, you're being indoctrinated actually. That's a little far. Uh, but I would say you're, you're at a place to actually learn something. So keep that heart open, keep the mind open. Um, and again, it's, it's never, it's never separated from being discerning and uh, making sure that, you know, the subtleties of deception aren't sneaking in. That's where those relationships um, come in. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. That, exactly. And I'm, cause I mean, in our culture, the college years are kind of designed for better or worse. I mean, it's just kind of a, a neutral reality. The college experience really in our Western culture is where people develop their sense of self truly yeah. because whether they're at home or not because <laughs> like, you're young and you got a lot to learn like well yeah. you got a lot to learn but also you are starting to be out on your own yeah different people's formative years you don't even know who you, um, are. you can have different experiences things like mm-hmm. that but i mean our culture like you're you're not really like if you're in high school middle school high school living at home yeah not not paying any bills not really having a job your parents take care of everything like not that you're not a human, but like you haven't really developed who you are as a person yourself. Right. Mm-hmm. So when you're kind of out on your own, you're you're getting to think your own thoughts. You're getting to figure out if you really are a person yeah. of faith. If, if faith is something that matters to you, mm-hmm. like what, how you want to spend your time. What am I going to invest my how time? How you want to spend yeah. your yeah. money? 100%. How you want to use your body? How like all these things? Like you're making those choices and figuring that out yourself. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. And that's another reason why why true community community is a buzzword that gets thrown out. But genuinely, the way God made church, like that, the community and the family of God, really is yeah. is huge in that. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, like we're talking about those, even if it's just two or three people that you can really talk to, really like, tell them what you're going and through, be known. what you're struggling mm-hmm. with, what you're doubting, what you're fearing, what you're stressed about, what you're sad about, like. Those people that you that care to hear that and care to bring the the truth of God to that, I mean, that's that's what people need. Like that is mm-hmm. what we're designed for in Christ. Like you know, I mean, I can kind of trace my spiritual maturity at various points of my life, without question. The highest points on various different areas of my life have been 
the result of me being like vitally connected yeah. to other brothers and sisters in Christ, yeah. whether it be small groups or really, really close friendships of people of faith where we'd get together and pray or read a book or study the Bible yeah. or whatever. But mm-hmm. like those, those relationships kind of, uh, yeah. super key. So Stephanie, if you're listening, honestly, <clears throat> like direct address, if there's, the if substance. there's any like way that we can help out in this in particular, like shoot us an email uh, the substance pod at gmail.com. And if there's any kind of research that we can help out with, look at student organizations or churches in the area that you wanted just to look through this. Yeah, we definitely would or love any other to jump in. Age listeners. Yeah. If, if this is you, it, you know, and your name doesn't happen to be Stephanie, but you have the same question, like hit us up on the email. And yeah, if there's anything that we can offer as far as like kind of sussing out networks or thinking through things, like we'd love to be that resource for you because honestly, like this is, a, it is a tough, challenging time and it'd be good. You know, it's just some help that we would love to care for our listeners in that way. Some, I actually, I wasn't sure if you were teeing up one of our next topics. I don't have the order. I kind of accidentally right t- teed it up. <laughs> You want to uh, you want to lead us into our next one there? <laughs> God's not dead, <laughs> too. The the professor's persecuting you, and you, I'm standing up for myself. Don't be like me. You think you're standing up for yourself, and actually, you're not being persecuted. You're just you know just being, being a ding dong. Just being a ding dong. I mean, there's been some crazy stuff going on with COVID, right? Yeah, um, there's been a lot of things going on with COVID, uh, mask mandates and uh, all types of regulations, uh, stay at home and essential workers and all kinds of things have been going on. And one thing that... Like uh, to be clear, very sensible public health orders in the midst of a pandemic. Well, sure. And and I think it's... Not it's everybody a, would say that one's clear. Yeah, and, and I'll... Disappointingly. I'll, I'll give it, you know, time at, at the fact that you know, health officials were seeking to figure this out in real time, and we were seeing yeah. that happen. Yeah. Um. So to make mistakes and and to kind of and all these decisions are necessarily political, e- even though like we want po- politics and the health policy to be separate. Like sure. when you're dealing with that many people's lives, like they're gonna, it's gonna impact them in different ways. Going to impact their pocketbook in different ways. Yeah. And so they're gonna have things to say about it. Right. Exactly. And they're gonna and- try to influence it. Exactly. And and so I think a pertinent question, especially for the Christian, the Christian community is this question around persecution. Um, what does that look like biblically? When is that biblically justified? When can we actually say um, in the midst of this particular event and going on in our lives? When do we stand up and say, you know, enough is enough? Like, what are the parameters to actually claim religious persecution? So, like, yeah, scenario, pastor is holding church services in violation of public health orders. And he's saying... Hypothetically. Yeah. He gets arrested. And and it's, okay, this is persecution. Like, this person was serving God, and he was obeying God rather than man. And what we're saying is, okay, you know, be even more wild or hypothetically is if he called him up and said, hey, please arrest me. That'd be even wilder. I think that, yeah. And that's where the specifics of the situation do help in different things, because it's like, what is actually going on in the Christian persecution? And I think some people are coming at it in a nuanced way that I think is helpful. Like, listen, just when persecution does come from the government, it doesn't always look like. If you're Christian, then, you know, you go to jail. Like, are Mm -hmm. you Christian? Okay. Like, that's sometimes, like, the DC in persecution, right? They had to carry around uh, letters of affirmation that they had sacrificed to the gods or had said Caesar or whatever, Hail Caesar, the Mm -hmm. imperial cult and that kind of thing. Um, There was, you know, in the movie Silence, right? Like, it's trample this image of Christ and you know what does it matter it's it's just an image it's a token it's meaningless yeah and obviously it's not meaningless it's not you know just a token if somebody is willing to torture people to get you to do that Mm -hmm. um so yeah very interesting but what about like yeah public health order that applies to a lot of industries and it's it's just 
it's hard for me to it's <laughs> it's hard it's hard for me to say like yeah. oh yeah this is definitely because here's the thing what what we're trying to discern is there's a couple things in scripture on the one hand if you do right and the government is against it and you stand up and do right anyway you're blessed god says that is good that is honorable in the sight of god that's what christ did yes mm-hmm. on the other hand this is all in first peter uh chapter uh four it says on the other hand if you do, you do Ill, wrong yeah. <laughs> and you're getting punished for doing wrong what credit is that you stop it like you're actually bringing a bad name on christ and the problem in this particular instance is christians actually are looking at this and saying one side is saying this is right this is honorable this is standing up for god's law against man's law and the yeah. other side is said no 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 there is this is not part of god's law this is not something that god has called us to do and you are standing against the safety of your congregation the health of your congregation and your mandate to follow what governing a, officials what a govern like a, a person who is wielding god's authority for your good and so you're actually defying God. And so this same event by some people is being a lot of interpreted. people who seem to love the Romans 13 a lot in a lot of other times. Right. Hmm. And it really does come down to that question, though. Right? Right? Is it like, Romans 14? You no, know, it's Romans 13. Romans, you, yeah, got it, you. you got it. Yeah. You got it. Um, but it really does come down to that question, though, right? Like it comes down to it. Is this defiance of the government authority? Because that is good sometimes. And that's where that gets nuanced. Because, like, right. it, and, and it is right where to... it gets unfortunately political. Because I think it, in some, in the two biggest profile deals, which is the uh, Canadian guy and uh, J Mac, like, it does kind of how you view the whole thing kind of depends on, like, how seriously you take public health officials. Right. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, if you don't believe the public health officials are telling the truth and they're just feeding you a liberal agenda or what have yeah. you, then, like, how do we love those folks? How do we engage with those folks? Well, I think it, and it's just, just to kind of go off of that stream of thought before we answer that question, I think it kind of bleeds back into our topic uh, toss up when we were talking about Christian con- Christians and conspiracy theories. Because I think you have to believe that there's something behind the scenes, that there's an agenda that is not I, showing said, their face. I have, I have seen, and I mean, this is anecdotal, but I, I've seen and had conversations where people, and this is, I know we've talked to audiences, I don't want to paint a broad brush and say a couple people have done this, and then mm. there are people saying this, but anecdotally, I have heard a number of people who do believe that, like, the government and people are trying to use these things to shut down churches. Like some of the people we've talked about on the show before previously, like they've explicitly said they are framing the J Mac and the Canadian guy whose name I I'm dropping right now. Mm -hmm. Um, that like the, the government is, is like plotting against them. Mm. Yeah. They've said that. Yeah, I mean, you can say that. The question is, what evidence is there for that conspiratorial mindset? You know, all these conspiracy theories, like we've talked about before, rely on the plausibility mm-hmm. and and the difficulty to disprove an idea. But the burden of proof lies on you, man. If you think that there's this grand government conspiracy to stop Christianity, when it's it's pretty clearly not the case. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, you have to you have to prove that. Um, and so that's, that's what would the be a good proof of that too, because I, some of the things that I've heard were like, well, look at the things they leave open and they're trying to shut down churches. I, I think that would be a good proof is, is if they were specifically targeting churches. Yeah. Um, we, we're not seeing that. Let's be clear. We're not seeing that the restaurant business is hurting. Well, that's it's a lot of businesses that are ter- hurting. People are being told that though. Well, so they would say, well, yeah, they are because xyz personality told me that right well and it's like well news and sources the church is an essential service to like that whole argument which just completely misunderstands what is meant by an essential service in a public health emergency like we're talking about these services that sustain life because i also could be wrong food shelter warmth and water Many mm. of the in in many of the high profile the churches, not just the two biggest ones that we mentioned here, 
but in a number of them, I have not seen, and please correct us, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I haven't seen anything explicitly saying churches can't meet. They're like, mega churches can't be filled to the brims with nobody wearing masks. Yeah. Have yeah. smaller services, yeah. do some digital stuff, meet outside. Like, they yeah. weren't saying, shut down Christianity. Yeah. Yeah, I they're mean, saying outside of that they're one... trying to say be safe on that like hour and a half a week that you guys do that yeah. one thing. Except that one county, I think, in California that was like, we want to have churches not sing because of projectile. And mm-hmm. that was, but that's still still not saying Christianity can't be here. But yeah. you but you can see how that kind of that but web what, starts to spin where they're like, well, that's a direct target. On Christianity, but it on isn't, church, though. on worship, but God because says, you're they said, stopping don't sing. me to, to make a joyful noise. But, but do but do Mormon like Mormons sing? Muslims sing? Jews? Right? These people have songs and prayers that they do. Right? That that order would have hit equally. So this is not Christian persecution. It's not. I'm just being the devil's advocate. I know you, you know are. Me. I know you are. <laughs> but I'm just for anyone who who would take that up. I'm just going ahead and and let me help you with some facts because like. If it was Christian persecution, how is it also persecuting every... It would just be religious persecution in general, I guess. And that happens, but this isn't that either, because it's not just religions. Like, it's it's just so hard to, to make this case when, like, also so many of us are still meeting and still doing church. And so, like, what's really... Here's the thing, though, for this. So, I, I wanted to bring this up. The Cripplegate blog... Eric Davis wrote, uh, basically, he says, guys like us who might think, I'm not quite sure that this counts as persecution, he says, our response should be to, uh, in his words, self-righteously lob, sorry, but that doesn't count as actual persecution flags upon a brother in jail whose treatment seems to have been questionable, while his dear wife, children, fellow elders, and church members grieve and suffer this situation. If you are someone who has been more eager to find a technical loophole justifying why it's not persecution and cry out, sorry, it's not real persecution, than to weep for him, his wife, his kids, the church, and the wickedness of the lost Canadian government, you probably need to repent of pride and examine if you are making secret compromises in your own conscience. Hmm. So I think that's a very interesting thought, but the problem is a couple things. One, this is an actual biblical question, and and let me say this: my my response to this wasn't to just like get online and trounce a dude. Like there were people who did that, and I think this is a response to that, and that's accurate because the the scriptures call us to use words that edify, that are not corrupting talk, that are good for the occasion, that fit the occasion. And the occasion when a Christian brother is in jail and his wife is grieving, like is probably gentleness and kindness right on mm-hmm. the people around the situation the issue was though there let me point this were out. they really grieving though Eve? they were but let me point this out okay his grief got out there the reason why we were even talking about this the reason why cripplegate was even talking about this was because this dude ended up being a political chip in the game that's being played in the culture war that's getting waged. he volunteered to be that people picked yeah and people picked up his deal and tweeted it out there now what's funny is like i know for a fact there was guys in early on in the pandemic there was guys in florida and louisiana who were mega church pastors who got arrested for essentially the same thing they weren't platformed because i think that's a good question why weren't they platformed in the same way this guy was as this chip in this political game and i think it might have been because he he volunteered well he volunteered for it, but i think he was a reformed dude like the James Coast guy, like he was, he was in that camp. Whereas these other dudes were like prosperity gospel right. preachers. Mm-hmm. So it's like, <laughs> do you see <laughs> like what's we happening? Fi- we finally have a guy that we can, like, that we can get behind and we can make him a case example. So it's like, I get it. Like, yes, like we should feel real compassion for our brothers who are suffering. That is regardless. an interesting like, point. The prosperity, like you didn't see the evangelical, yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, hive mind. Go. This is religious persecution when the mega yeah. church pastors got in trouble. And personally, I I wasn't I haven't seen the the whether or not he was like personally volunteering for it. And and I know we're getting into the specifics a lot now, but like I I would just say regardless of the man himself, like 
I, I do grieve for the man himself. I do grieve for his family. You know, that, that is hard. And I don't want someone to have to go through that. At the same time, I don't want his congregation to have to go through COVID because of his insolence. And I also don't want him and his family being used as a political chip in the culture war. Like, Mm -hmm. where's the grace in that? Where's the, where's the kindness? Where's the humility? Where's the, we we're talking about all these, these character qualities, but like these guys who originally tweeted and platformed and retweeted these things to hype the church up in fear yeah, about that's this exactly stuff. what it was. Mm-hmm. That's like if you want to point a, like a finger at something, let's look at that because like the people who ended up responding harshly to it, they were wrong. Yeah, but they were wrong because they were saying, "Well, hold on a second. We're, this is not what we do as is, the people of God. Yeah, this is not representative of us, and this is being put out there as representative like, of us, gleefully becoming like this a isn't just news of a guy's pong. sorrow." This is this is very targeted and very specific and has an angle and we see it. So let's not be dumb here. Mm. Like we know what's going on. <laughs> yeah. Like we know what this is being used for. And that's sad. It's sad that we would use a pastor and, and his suffering, no matter how it came about, as this political pawn. And it's even sadder if he intended it that for his family. And and I think if he did, that's even more a sign that like, okay. You did this in some sort of prove a point, selfish, ambitious statement, and like that's also not persecution. It's super duper not. When once again you have the freedom to meet as the Bible describes in ways that don't put people's health at risk or violate the law of the land. Yeah, and I think there 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 can be some level of grace at just looking at the fact that somebody's in jail and jail is not comfortable jail is not sure. a great place and so i can i can say you know regardless of the circumstance i can say that's that's pretty hard that's tough the hope is that you know he can't get out of of, of jail at the same time i think more than anything this is a, an example of um like just like you said trev this the, there's a there's I hate to say it that way, but it's a there's a game being played. Yeah, and we we would do well to take a couple steps back before we pounce on this, um, and say what is this game that's being played, and is it does it honor God for me to join in that game? Right. Well, and that's why because we talked about do we even want to cover this because <sighs> yeah the news cycle in our day and age unfortunately goes so quick that being a month or two down the road like this is already old news some people yeah. have already forgotten about this yeah thank but God. His, his trial hasn't happened yet and these sorts of things i feel like i i'm guessing will, will i'm guessing this will not be the last religious figure who kind of jumps into the political realm to kind of make a statement so the the substance of this topic i think will uh, have importance going forward. And I think there's there's definitely truth in saying like, you know, holding to what scripture says about uh we talked about that in the last episode about uh the biblical sexual ethic. And if you're being told compromise what scripture says about that in order to yeah. fit in this area, then that's a that's a solid no. And if you get persecuted for that, then yeah. that's persecution because something that god has objectively established in his truth uh and we're we're just saying lord said it and i obey it and yeah. that that's being persecuted or or anything you know someone's telling you you know uh you know the trinity is not the trinity it's something else yeah. or jesus isn't jesus he's someone else and we stand up for what scripture has to say and there are repercussions that could be intense or or not so intense. We stand for those things. So there there is a, a an aspect where we do stand for truth. This one, like you said, has so many nuanced areas. And what some would say, there is a better way to go about it. I think our understanding of persecution needs to continue to be studied. I'll put mm-hmm. this in the show notes. I, I found it. Sorry, mm-hmm. I didn't Google and have this uh, on hand when we started this topic. The commander of the Royal Canadian Mounties said this. He said, um, in in regards to the escalation to all this stuff, like our objective is not to interrupt church services, prohibit church services, nor deny people's right to practice their religion. 
it is merely to ensure that the public health restrictions are adhered to while doing so. That was his statement. Yeah. That was his statement the whole time. So, Mm -hmm. I mean, unless you believe in these conspiratorial things, they're saying, hey, because he was fined a number of times. They tried to educate him a number of times. They're like, we don't want to stop this. Mm -hmm. We just want public health to be cared about. Yeah. 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 And so what about teachability? What about, you know, these are qualifications for an elder. These are qualifications for biblical wisdom, according to James, right? Like, I'm not saying that the government's never going to come a- come against us, is never going to try to say these different things. We already see it. Like, mm-hmm. there's things I was just reading today about, um, not to open a new can of worms, but we're kind of free flowing on topic toss up. Um, I'm just reading about the Bethany uh, fostering services, or the largest uh, fostering and adoption services uh, in the Protestant world Mm -hmm. and they're like recently had like took down their statement on like what actual biblical marriage is like a man and a woman that's an interesting topic i actually got into it with some folks on the tgc comment thread on that we Mm. can talk about that in a future topic yeah i think that's a great topic but i think that that's an interesting thing right where it's like okay like when when people are backing off of and i think it's a nuanced thing for them but I think what isn't nuanced is backing off of biblical convictions in in order to fit in more. And like, that's, that is sad, you mm-hmm. know? And that is something where like, we don't have to put our deal in everybody's face. We do live in a secular society. See us on so many other episodes when we talk <laughs> about these things. Like this is probably me being in a lot more balance in this area, but like, yeah, I get, there is, there are places where our faith is going to be put challenged us and put us at odds sure. and and deny us opportunities and things like that. Yep. And we we need to be courageous for that, but, but don't seek it out. And especially when back into the social justice realm, but like especially when like the folks who really are defying the cultural and institutional norms of like oppression and evil and wickedness and devaluing human lives and that we just go along with on a daily basis and also like demonize anybody in our denominations and churches who would try to bring light to it Mm -hmm. and then but like but then we had to wear a mask so we're persecuted like Take a walk. <sighs> Come on, guys. Like, where? Like, I, let's use some better biblical discernment <laughs> I, I to be understand. It's hard. The heart of it's God hard. towards humans. You know, yeah. that's that's really what it is. For sure. And our last uh, uh, light topic that we have here oh, to close man. out. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was. I, I thought it was interesting. You're talking about the news cycle, man, and like the news cycle Those really facts. has kind of moved on from the Robbie Zacharias stuff, but there's still so much coming out and like so much. Yeah. Oh my goodness. There's th- well, that's going to be going on for a while. It will. And I really hope that RZIM international figures it out. Cause I mean, mm. they were doing a lot of good work in a lot of places and the fallout of just the atrocious things that he's done, like mm-hmm. is affecting gospel work all over the world. hundred yeah. percent. I mean, as it would, right? Like, yeah. Do somebody do? Should one of us should kind of give a nutshell of? I think the Christianity Today piece was the biggest kind of. Um, you want me to do that? Yeah, go for it. Um, so, Ravi Zacharias passed away in 2019? 2019? No, I think it was twenty nineteen or twenty twenty. All right, kind of. So, in a nutshell. There have been accusations of sexual misconduct around Ravi Zacharias for quite some time, and there was controversy, as there should have been, mm-hmm. for he he traveled with a masseuse and owned several massage parlors, mm-hmm. kind of a very weird thing for yeah, a like, gospel minister to do. He traveled with a on his jet or he didn't have a jet but like when he went with a flu female masseuse personally yeah traveled with this person yeah uh he he had properties around the world Mm -hmm. um where he paid for women to stay oftentimes masseuses who (sighs) people knew he had back problems so i guess nobody batted an eye after a certain point they just kind of accepted it because he was a man of character hmm Go see a chiropractor. Like, <laughs> dadgum. Like, 
Yeah. It's, that's such a bad excuse. I can't believe like ah, people believed that in good faith. Like, but they do, right? Like because yeah. he you was trust him. He was a man who who taught clearly and well. I mean, I been benefited oh, a number of, yeah, sure. by a number of his resources so many times for sure um so there have been accusations for a while recently it was kind of proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that uh, in person like physical sexual misconduct i don't know this almost is a political thing I, I feel like in a way sexual assault is probably appropriate in some of the terms basically no, yeah. like a using, appropriate description of what he's yeah, saying yeah not mm-hmm. that he was like uh, and and a, a violent, aggressive man, but that he used his position of spiritual authority oh, yeah. to coerce women to yep. either engage in sexual practices with him, watch him engage in sexual practices by himself, or send them send him explicit content of themselves mm-hmm. for years and years and years. Even close to his dying day. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean... It's and I, I think an important aspect that we haven't mentioned yet of this whole thing is that the allegations that came up even in the years before he died and like he used all of his power and clout in the organization and everybody backed him to basically listen guys in the midst of all of this stuff we just described and then misconduct sexual misconduct allegations come to them. And instead of like being like, yeah, it is kind of weird. My, the bro travels around with masseuse. <laughs> yeah. They they decided to like go full war on this family that was making this accusation. Yeah. And demonize them and like basically try to destroy this family. Yeah. And just everything was battled against them and like circle the wagons around Ravi. And now it's coming out that like they mistreated this family that was speaking the truth. Which yeah. that for me, there, there's, there's a couple things that I want to get. It's in. a heartbreaking topic. Yeah. I this was is... honestly, genuinely very <sighs> pleased to see RZIM's at least acknowledgement. I know you were a little bit harsher on the report than I was. Yep. It's been a little while since it I read was. the whole thing. Mm. RZIM said clearly, like, we, instead of taking this seriously, we demonize these people, yep. and that was wrong. That, I've never seen a Christian yeah. organization say things so boldly okay. when they've done something so wild. I'll explain to you, like, that statement was the best thing that they could do at that time. It was just, like, so cowardly that, and that's what made me angry, sure. was it was so cowardly that it happened after he died. You well, because they didn't cowards. do an inv- they sat didn't, on this they for didn't three do an years until he died. They didn't do a real didn't investigation. Didn't even look right. into it. Well, and so you along even have with the gall to look traveling into it. with women, paying for women's lodging, owning sketchy massage parlors, let's be frank about mm-hmm. that. Homie also had a private phone and computer service. So, like, all the company stuff he was separate from. Nobody Mm -hmm. at RZIM could, like, he literally was like boxed off and had zero accountability within his organization. And last I checked, the RZIM, the Ravi Zacharias International Ministry Board, is not public. Not like the people who are on the board, nobody knows who they are. Yeah. So and there they, was, they still they have a long way to go. Yeah, I think they're they had they're that opportunity done. when when that first set of accusations came out. Yeah. And they released a statement saying Oof. we did an investigation and we found that the claims were illegitimate. And so And that's not true. It's, right? it's not true. It's not That's true. the thing. They it, didn't it do a legitimate investigation and, and so find out the claims were untrue. This they, is a thing that you can see in a lot of they others. They made a public statement that was a lie. When missions organizations, churches, because I mean, it's kind of happened with Sovereign Grace and other things too, like when organizations say that they've conducted an internal investigation, mm-hmm. they can maybe feel like they're telling the truth. But what has been shown is a lot of times they their people will ask their people questions not push back at all and say well we did an investigation he said he didn't do it case closed right yeah and there's a lot of heartbreaking things about the entirety of this i think 
two really big things that really break my heart about it. One is 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 the people that he victimized. Mm-hmm. It, it was calculated. It it wasn't like he was just uh-huh. wrestling with something it and was, he was trying to overcome a sin. Predatory. Clearly. It was predatorial. He was he was. I mean, you can read the 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 statement of the investigation, but I mean, he made claims. Uh, acknowledging that you are going to put, you know, the salvation of millions of people if you discredit me. Yeah, and it's Putting like his that's... sin off on them, like right. And like that, if you tell people about with sin. my sexual misconduct with you, you're gonna struggle other people's faith because of my stature in the faith community. Oh my that's Lord. not, yeah, that's not struggling with that is you know, turning the grace sin. of God into Say licentiousness. That again. So that's an important part. I have seen people say like. Ravi struggled with sin and we all struggle. Like I want to respond to that. It's I not respond to that like too, yeah. it, Ravi Zacharias didn't have a difficult marriage and developed a relationship with a woman that he had a sexual relationship with. He didn't have a pornography problem. He used his, his money and his spiritual authority to to groom and victimize women and then manipulate them into science. He didn't, he wasn't a man who struggled. Yeah. (sighs) Yeah. Okay. So the whole, like, you know, everybody got up in arms because there's some folks online who were saying like, there, but for the grace of God, go I kind of thing. (laughs) And I'm sorry to laugh. It's just so insane. Well, okay. I don't think it's insane necessarily. Like, I think that yes, there but the grace of God go go I like that. The whole point of that statement is that we could be the worst, and and to point out that he no, but he really was the worst. Yes, sin is that awful, and it does go that deep if you don't deal with it. The problem that I have with that statement isn't that. The problem that I have with that statement is that what it does it function its function is to overlook bypass and mute the institutional cultural and systemic realities that bring that event about like we are having a moment of questioning as to what is going on here within and, the, the system and you're mm-hmm. shutting down that conversation like the whole point of that statement like, oh, there but the grace you. of it could be me like it's like all, like uh, everybody yeah. has their own less he struggles. just happened to like, be who knows? he just happened to be a bad individual and so you're explicitly denying and saying there's nothing to see here about the organ how was an organization built on faith around this man supporting and defending him yeah. right that is a deeply important question and when you say oh there but the grace of god go i it's it's not that you don't understand like how bad he is. It's that you are t- completely trying to mute the discussion around the institutional problems. I here. think it's both, and that's, though. That is just that's unconscionable. I think it's both, though, because I saw a lot of people, I think rightly so, pointing out like it isn't like he had an affair with a woman. Because then it's like okay, like yeah. that could happen to anybody. No, like. Homie built up this thing over years, yeah. had his just, own phone, was, had his own computer, be, yeah. had his own things that these systems did. I think it's both. Well, I don't think the point of the original poster's statement of, oh, there but the grace of God go I, was about like, oh, how common his his particular sin is. I think he was trying to say, listen, sin's bad. But the problem I had with this thing, like, yes, it was it was tone deaf, but it was tone deaf because it was shutting down the conversation around the systemic issues. And I think one thing that we, I I, I agree with that because I agree too, if we by the way. aren't talking Let's... about this system that allows for something like a Ravi Zacharias scandal to happen, yeah, there are. I mean, think about this: there are victims in this. This yeah. is not something that just affected him in his ministry. He had there are hundreds and hundreds and of photos of women that he had solicited over a period of many years. Yeah, these 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 people are suffering oh, yeah. and we and we don't have to live in in uh, overzealous caution or anything like that about other leaders, Mm-mm. but we do need to talk about do we have the kind of structure that shuts this kind of thing down because right. this I'm I'm being as frank as possible, this should not be happening with Christians. We sin, we fall, but this should not be yeah. happening with us. Mm-mm. And just because somebody gets notoriety and has a platform and they're able to speak and articulate, that shouldn't happen. Mm-hmm. There was one of those sins was his first one. 
Ravi. Right. There was a first woman who he solicited to send him illicit material or okay. watch him pleasure himself or whatever. There was a first. Okay. Sure. And then, like, that should have been the last. Because th- somebody should have spoke there up have and been, somebody yeah. should have listened. Yeah. There should have been some sort of 100%. accountability. in pro- Yeah. And the thing is, too, like, these, these things come out, right? And I feel like... I. I have a whole thing that I could could go into, but I don't have the time to. But I just want to mention that, like, there's a lot of people trying to think about, well, what is this from? And I've seen people say, oh, see, this is a patriarchy in the church. And to be honest, I don't really buy that, like, because I, I think either. you would you would see it more elsewhere. Like, sexual misconduct is rife throughout our culture. It's humanity. It, mm-hmm. This what... one in particular sucks a lot because... It's in a faith-based organization. That the and faith-based so, organization, like, yeah. protects So why is that happening? And that's the question. And yeah. so the the thing about that is, like, I think it does go back to this study. Um, Max Stiles mentioned it in his book, Marks of the Messenger, yes. about this uh, Brown student who went to Liberty University and was posing as a Christian. And he was basically... The, the conclusion of the study was Oof. like to be accepted as a Christian, there was some fairly easy cultural markers that you just had to pretend in and you'd be accepted and assumed that you were a believer. Nobody, nobody necessarily ever would explain the gospel to you or check you on sin or hold you accountable or mm. actually like go into the things of God with you. If but you like said and did a couple of very, simple very things. basic yes. things like you just were just learned, in the club. Yeah. And so what I think is like, do we have a culture that is rife to be, to be conned? To be to have con men come in and peddle themselves and and their things because there are people that getting access to the church community will give them access to, to right to people to, to pray vulnerable on. people yeah. to prey on yes um through seen, fear through yeah. fear mongering through all sorts of different stuff right and so like by playing the game the Robbie Zacharias kind of thing can happen or the Carl Lentz or. I mean, other other folks that you see and and mm-hmm. who are it just over and over and over again, and it doesn't always have to be sexual misconduct. But I think this thing of like these persuasive guys who are using the church to their own ends and their own power works because we haven't really fully invested in what does it look like to do power Jesus's way. Yes. Yeah. To, to to have accountability. Walk in the way he walked. To prioritize the things that he prioritizes. Yeah. Like, and it's very much by not loving power, <laughs> yeah. which yeah. is uh, pretty countercultural. In yeah, it's, a lot it's of our seeing contexts. the individual that is in that position as you know, the, definitely if especially it's in a church, this person is a shepherd. This person is is governing our souls. They have a responsibility, but they are not they are not to be excluded from being yeah. discipled, being held accountable, being uh, held to a biblical standard of what God requires yeah. of them. And if you slip, if you fall and it doesn't, like you said, it doesn't have to be sexual misconduct always, but it's, it's having somebody there to, to check us. Cause that's mm-hmm. a good thing. It's not, yeah. it I is. don't need unfettered power. Yeah. I, no. I need to be checked and held accountable in these kind of structures and when we try to like play to all these market forces to like find the most charismatic guy and lift him up and make it all about the dude you know Mm -hmm. so that we can sell more copies and get more conferences their organizations after themselves Mm -hmm. and like when we when we get this cult of personality going like we are actually straying from the scriptures who from old to new testament folks are being led by the elders in their community Mm -hmm. plural and it, the, these were the guys local on their level who shepherded them and cared for their souls. And we talked about this on Celebrity Pastors, too, mm-hmm. that this whole mindset of, like, lifting up the guy who's going to be so charismatic and such a good speaker and such a good ex and, like, be out there in the public relations realm and on social mm-hmm. media and getting people in the church and reaching the community and, like, being just the hyper CEO leader guy. Like, yeah, that's not... Jesus's picture That's not the gospel of ministry. spiritual leadership. Yeah. Yeah, like influencer and, Christianity and is And it not, has consequences yeah. when we le- make it that. Say it again, bro. Yeah. It it it, it has to it has to when we stray from the biblical model, Which, it's going to mm, have consequences. Also, 100. just kind of a sidebar why uh, another one of the many reasons I really really genuinely admire John Piper. Mm. Mm. He didn't build his ministry off his own name. 
he never took a dime kind of wildly. I don't even know if that was always a good idea. He never took a dime for the sales of his books. He retired from ministry and handed it off to a younger man when he could have preached for yeah, decades and decades more. more if he wanted. Like, yeah, he's a fault. He, he's a human man. He's a frail sure. man. I'm sure. He's got plenty of uh, um, <clears throat> shortcomings, but like, yeah. And the best you can examples, see the like he's a good example, but the best the examples heart. are the guys. Yeah, yeah. You could, sorry to cut you well, off. Well, somebody that has a public ministry because it's not yeah. bad to be blessed and right. be influential. But yeah, to do that like in a way that pulls others alongside, so you're not yes. the guy. Mm-hmm. You should ne- like you should always be wary of somebody yeah. who desires to be the guy like or the, the gal. Yeah. Because honestly, the best examples of living this out are names we would never be able to name because Jesus knows their name. Mm-hmm. And the people that they are ministering to Faithful plotters, know their right? names. And that's it. Yeah. And we talked about that in the Celebrity Pastor one, like you said, yeah. about how the, the standard almost for church growth is how famous are you? And that's that's becoming like the the rule now. It's mm-hmm. like if you can gain a platform, fill the church all the way to the point where you need to get a new building and all kinds of crazy stuff. Hilariously, like, that. like is the church who's like we want to be countercultural? No, like you are you are the culture. You are the yeah. bad culture. <laughs> yeah, when you do that, are we the baddies? Yes. <laughs> so I know a, a popular question that's going around uh, in light of this controversy. Um, is should Christians continue to watch Robbie Zacharias on YouTube and keep like reading his books? <sighs> That's so hard. That's Can a hard they? Question. Like in good con- like I mean, the propositional truths are true or false. The man has a lot of the man put out content that was helpful for a lot of people. I'm not going to tell anybody who's like. I'm done with that. I'm not going to tell anybody that they're wrong for that. Um, I'm also not going to tell anybody who like is really like, uh, okay, this video is the thing that like really made this click for me and really does make it click for me. Like I'm going to watch it. Like we learn from flawed sources all the time. Like all truth is God's truth is something that we're saying all the time. I'm I'm not going to throw kingdom of the cults away. It's a super helpful reference point, but like whenever I see it, his name and I go, ugh. like, and I think some people have talked about like publishers pulling the books so that they can, I wouldn't be mad at that so that they can put like disclaimers disclaimers and things in them before they put them back out or have another editor work on it so that they can put some like, I don't yeah. think any of those things are wrong. I think maybe, that's all all good. Maybe my opinion's different. I, I say there's there are a litany of apologetic teachers mm. and preachers sure. out there. I, I I don't need to glean to that. You're like there's, find something else. Yeah. That's there's, fine there's, too. There's enough yeah. out there to yeah. where I don't need to yeah. I- engage in that content. Yeah. Well, and if he was I, I think the hard I mean we're we're running low here, but I, I think the hardest one is where he was like the dude for you because I mean he he had decades of ministry yeah, yeah where he put true. out like the content was so solid, was solid and so impactful for so many people yeah. and what do those people do like I say like follow your conscience but like yeah. it's whatever 100%. you do it's appropriate to mourn because like yes. this is this grieves God yes it like yes. this Amen. and whether or not he's saved is a whole another thing but like the enemy is delighted about oh, this yeah. mm-hmm. and this is this is a case yeah. to grieve yeah and and don't grieve alone grieve in community once again yeah. bring this together bring this to the church if you're hurting by this you're like if you're still processing through this because this was so near and dear to you like take those burdens i mean take them to the lord because he cares for you but take them to your local church. Take them to your elders. Yeah, and don't pastors, let this shake your faith. Your small like, group. Yeah. He was just a yeah. man. God didn't do this. God, God hates this. And in some senses, it's okay if it makes you tremble. If it's okay if, it, because this was a huge event. But when when you shake, do you have someone who's there to study you? Like, yeah. do you have someone that you can bring that to? And I think that's the key thing. Just don't. Yeah, yeah. Stay in that way. It's good. Want to hit some shout outs here? Substance shout outs. Let's uh let's bring the mood up with some shout outs. Vince, what something, you got, my something man? good, something we're talking um, about. So I really love music and I think the majority of my I last think almost shout outs, every single one yeah, is, is music. <laughs> is so this guy for AGTV. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, so this guy, uh, his name is The Count. Uh, and it's Ooh. called uh, T-H-E-K-O-U-N-T. Um, and he, this guy. One. Uh, ha, ha, ha. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I knew somebody was going to pounce on Oh, man. I, I couldn't help myself. I'm just like, I'm just watching the timer. I'm just letting it go. That's, I didn't even. That's very no, good. No, but me off this, guard. this man. You're making me laugh a lot today, Trev. <laughs> this man makes, uh, he just makes beats. And it's it sounds really really simple. Just instrumentals. Just instrumentals. It's but like hip hop. Man, yeah, it's hip hop instrumentals. Mm. And so, but my goodness, this man. I mean, he is in a lab creating such good mm-hmm. music. So if you this guys in beats R and D yeah, over here. Oh my goodness, he he's he, yeah he's got it. And so he most of his stuff is on um, Instagram. Um, hmm. And so you can follow him there. Um, and I mean, that's where I listen to a lot of his stuff, but he's got stuff on SoundCloud as well. And he even sells uh, like uh, beat packages yeah. for producers who make music. Thanks. Vince, when are you going to drop your album? Yeah, you're going to uh, rap over you know, some of the Counts Beats, man. You got your verses? <laughs> no, not, not, not I. MC but, Edwards. Yeah. <laughs> uh, MC Edwards. Uh, but no, I, I've definitely enjoyed his content. So if you've got some time and you just want to hear some really sick hip hop beats and no, you know, no language with it. So it's just it's just instruments. That's great. And uh, he's that. definitely done collaborations with people where people sing on it or at least put a, a, a melody to it. Um, and those have been fantastic as well. But uh, the count is is definitely my <laughs> shout out for this week. Dope. So Trevor, I texted you I today. <laughs> so so I listen I listened to this great podcast yesterday. I'm like, oh, I gotta shout this out tomorrow for sure, one hundred percent. And then Philip's like, I got my shout out, bro. And it's the same thing. <laughs> but, uh, but we decided, you know what? Nice. We're we're just gonna both both shout it out because it's perfect because we're going long. It's super good. Yeah. Um, so Jamar Tisby is on a podcast. It's technically the witnesses podcast at this yeah. point called Pass the Mic. Mm-hmm. Um, but they recently released an episode uh, titled Leave Loud, J- Jamar Tisby's story. Basically, First time kind of going public with his, like publicly kind of breaking down yeah. the history of his experience with the white evangelical. Yeah, and it is very much testimonial, like just what the Lord has been doing in his life and like the different experiences he had and the hardships and different things like that. And the whole idea of the Leave Loud is based on a New York Times article that was talking about the quiet exodus that is happening as like black folks leave quietly because they realize white the space evangelical isn't spaces like, aren't for them. Mm-hmm. It's not like, friendly, not welcoming to them. And so, but he, so like that's the whole like Leave Loud, like no, like bear witness, tell the truth about this. Like it's the whole idea of the witness, like bearing witness. And so it was. Dude, it rocked me. Like I, I was driving around for work today, listening to it. Like one time, it like straight up brought me to tears. But like mm-hmm. it was a lot of Man. a lot of heavy stuff in there. Yeah, it it really is. I recommend everyone to go listen to that. It's an hour and change. I, I sent it's almost two. Hours. It's like an hour forty something like yeah, that. But it's yeah. it doesn't drag. It's I it, sent it to some people that I'm really interested to see because. Do you relate with it some? Yeah, bro. Like, yeah, I we have all left, yeah, churches and trying to figure out our place in Christianity because I mean, theologically, I haven't. And the thing is, like, I haven't yeah. changed, right? I'm a person who affirms inerrancy. I, I affirm. I mean, I I, all I don't historic. come from a confessional background. I don't have like a, a no. certain confession that I'm like that's my theological confession. Well, like or whatever. the centrality of substitutionary atonement and, and well, yeah, Christ's all, work on the cross and all like yeah like, the, the inerrancy of Scripture, the the personhood of Christ, like the the efficacy of the atonement, all these things yeah. like salvation by faith. No, I budged on none of it. Yeah, I just think that the Bible and the the hundreds of passages that speak about how we relate to one another should be taken seriously yeah. in the modern world. Mm-hmm. And I found that some of the spaces that I've been a part of before yeah. don't have a place for me well, because of that. Yeah. And like something that we've said in a past episode that, uh, if you haven't gotten a chance to check it out, check it out. But like fundamentally, like the thing I believe that, that 
upset to me, I guess, and is not belonging in some of these spaces is like systemic racism is real in our place and time. And the Bible, and the Bible has Bible something to something. say about that. Like I had, and I con- think a lot of people actually do believe the Bible has something to say about it. They just don't think that that actually exists. Yeah, mm. no, I like they're fine to condemn systemic racism in the past. Yeah, and it that, stopped that isn't MLK, in their time. Right? But they have to put it at some stopping point in the past so that they don't have to deal with it right now. Yeah, no, we've both had, and I don't want to speak for you, but I, I vividly remember having a conversation with uh, a spiritual leader. And it was basically just like, no, like I, we agree on just about everything. It's just that be, because of these things, particularly in re, in relation to social justice and systemic racism, like we just are kind of living in two different realities. Mm-hmm. Your gospel, like, yeah, like keep preaching the gospel, da da da. da but like, you think that I'm? Yeah, I can definitely. Re- I haven't listened to the content. I definitely will, but. Uh, just, you know, speaking on the subject, that's definitely something that I haven't spoken much about, but definitely something that I I can relate to, yeah. um, of just kind of, and you know, I, I didn't even think of, of leaving loud, uh, more than just kind of slipping out of the door and just mm-hmm. saying, this is, this is, I, I love them and I honor them and I respect them because they're brothers and sisters in Christ. Mm-hmm. And I think there's some of this that exists of the defense of what they're doing is 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 out of ignorance and they yeah. they they're not yeah. doing it maliciously right but then there's a part where it's like there are some things that are so obvious it's welcoming some cognitive dissonance but also i mean it's it's loving to correct and i mean i think part of the leave loud thing is to be like hey it's not that it's because we love you that you're like do you realize mm-hmm. that your culture like that the the culture of what of the the base culture of white christianity yeah like is not fully good right and it is loving to kind of call attention to some of these things and i thought it was interesting too this will be the last thing i say on it but like he was talking about how he didn't own the term evangelical or reformed christian or any of that anymore like he because he just didn't feel like any of those camps really described a space that was for him and like he said his label that he owned was just black christian and, like, the thing is, that's been the community that has welcomed me the most, but I'm not black. So I'm like, what do I, what am I, you know? And that's something I just don't even know and, like, don't, don't know what to, to call that. Like, I'm not fundamentalist anymore. Like, that's, that's a label I've left behind. Evangelical? Like, but does that mean something separate? It's like, got a lot of value, but I mean, I and it's got like, a lot of baggage too. Yeah, I almost wish I could just like, can I be included in black <laughs> too? But like, I'm not just black. like follower of Christ. Yeah, Christian. Yeah. No, it, it's hard, yeah. and it it's made unnecessarily more hard by folks who are unwilling to even have that conversation. So check our by this time. Um, definitely, racism. our systemic racism will be out, and maybe our Daniel Hill episode might be out as well and i believe or look out for that next week i believe i'm going to put a playlist of we're not a social justice podcast up on youtube <laughs> i haven't talked I like that it. over with you yet but no, i'm just going it. live heck yeah do that do it to it yeah all nice. right well we've gone long um if you like what we do here on the substance and you want to become a regular supporter um you can sign up at any monthly amount that works for you You can sign up on our anchor link in the show notes. Um, One of the things we are working on is kind of bringing you more, uh, trying to bring you more content. So one of our goals actually is to, by the end of 2021, to have 20 or more $5 a month supporters. So if you want to join us, that would be greatly Mm. appreciated. Or um, whenever you're able to on cash app, you can give individual donations. If you particularly love an episode, consider throwing us a little bit on cash app. We are at dollar sign, the substance pod. And follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook all at the substance pod there. You can, uh, follow our content. I know we talked about a lot today. Mm -hmm. Um, and so that's a great place to leave a comment under a post. Um, and just let us know what you thought, um, because we, we really want the community to be involved and we really appreciate what you have to say. You don't even have to agree with us, uh, but we would love to dialogue with you, um, in a, in a peaceable and substantive way. Um, there are giveaways are there and just all of our shout 
shout out so you can follow that if you didn't catch something that we went through. Um, so yeah, follow us on those platforms and uh, also follow us on YouTube um, and uh, leave us a like uh, if you enjoy the content there as well. Absolutely, man. And I know we gave you guys the substance email, the substance pod at gmail.com earlier in the show, but just want to reiterate, like we are a show for you guys. Like this is your show. We're the hosts here, but this is your space. And so reach out to us. Uh, if you have questions, thoughts, things you want on the show, topic suggestions, we love those. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or even just, just questions, questions about the faith, things like that. Like, um, we are open to listening and hearing those. You can drop us an email there. You can also leave us a voice message on our phone line, 913-703-3883. We listen to those. Uh, if they're good and you're okay with us putting it on the show, that's what we do. We'll put it on the show. So just know that if you're leaving a voicemail there, if it's something meaningful to us, we could throw it on there. So yeah, give us a ring, leave us an email and we will get back to you for show. Well, that wraps it up for this week. Thank you guys for joining us, and we'll see you next time on The Substance. We could. We could. Yeah. Yeah, we could. You have landed on The Substance, a podcast aiming at being biblical, thoughtful, <laughs> and was, human. That was a zag. <laughs> I think I, I got like, an eyelash in there. I like, I, I like your initiative there on that one, though. Sorry. <laughs> no, I was just laughing because my dude's like sitting over here like, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, I think I got an eyelash in there. Oh, are you all right? You need no, like a, oh, yeah, you need a bathroom trip to get that washed out? <laughs>